What do you do when your ex is just so angry and bitter towards you that they won't even listen to you? They won't even hear you out. They won't even um, have the space to open up to take in anything that you say. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So please watch through to the end because we're going to be covering um, all of this and more. And also specifically, we're going to be having question and answer towards the end of this video as well, too. But first, hello, my name is Clay with ModernLove.Life, where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not, because you, of course, deserve to be loved for the unique and amazing person that you are. Um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and get, get on into this. So, you know, we've, we've talked over the past couple of days about... Um, you know, getting on the same team and about clearing the communication between the two of you. You know, these are obviously really important things when it comes to setting yourself up uh, for a great relationship, reconciliation, um, or whatever the case might be. Because, you know, obviously, I don't think it's a stretch for most people to realize that communication is an important element in a relationship and that having a good emotional connection is important as well, too. But you might be wondering, okay, that all sounds great. But um, my ex doesn't even, you know, they, they won't even listen to me. They won't talk to me. They, they, they're, they're, they're just so angry and bitter and hostile towards me that uh, I can't even get the opportunity to talk to them to bring up a same team conversation to apologize for something from the past to, you know, do anything like this. And so, Obviously, this is where we're going to have to directly address the emotions that that they're holding on to and that they are feeling, um, um, you know, so stuck in themselves so that they can then let go of those emotions and allow themselves to open themselves up. But first, what we have to do is we have to address this. Now, I know that there are a lot of people in the no contact cult out there that think that, hey, you know, if your ex is just so angry and upset with you, you just need to go into no contact and um, just wait for them to miss you because they always miss you. And then they're going to come crawling back over broken shards of glass to apologize for you and beg you back. And <laughs> look at that. You don't even have to apologize. Or, if, you know, if you're somewhat more of a reasonable person. You might say, okay, well, you know, maybe they're maybe they're angry at me, but maybe I do need to do no contact so that they have some time to heal emotionally and to forget um, the the painful experiences in the past and all that, so that we can have a more rational conversation. And maybe you don't expect them to come crawling over broken shards of glass or anything, but you um, do think that having no contact will help to sort of, sort of smooth out the rough edges. And once again. It is true that no contact can reduce the intensity of some emotions over time. Um, however, that is just you know one way that things can go. It's 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 not like uh, you know written in stone that they will always uh, you know let go of their emotions and heal and all that stuff if you just give them time. And obviously, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that no contact is not something that I'm a huge fan of. I don't think that it should be your only strategy. In fact, I don't think that most people should be using no contact at all. Of course, there is a time and place for it, but not all the time and definitely not as your default strategy. In fact, no contact can actually cause more harm because when they have a very negative opinion of you and then you go into no contact for, you know, maybe something like a month, um, they can hold on to that negative opinion of you and it can actually sort of solidify in place and uh, they can they can start to just sort of see you as this this negative person, this angry person, this bitter person, this this uh, this untrustworthy person, this person that they you know uh, uh, hurt them or something like that. And this can start to form a, a more um, solidified opinion of you that they might have a harder time letting go of um, after a period of no contact. So don't think that no contact is your cure all. Obviously, we've talked about this before on this channel. I'm not going to belabor this point. But if that's the case, then, you know, what are you supposed to do? What should you do in these situations? And as we've alluded to already, you want to come at this head on by directly addressing the issue at hand with um, you and your partner. Now, before we go ahead and get into that, if you do like these videos that I do, please help boost my low self-esteem by gently tapping that thumbs up button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm, as well as um, if you are interested in getting um, lifetime access to everything that we have and everything that we may produce in the future, 
please on please head on over to modernlove.life slash lifetime. Um, and you can go ahead and sign up uh, for an interest list. And next week, uh, the week of June, what is it? June um, 11th, I think. Uh, is that is that Monday, 11th, 12th? Um, we're going to go ahead and um, start welcoming people into our uh, lifetime access program. And I, I know in the past, I might not have explained this very well. So let me just explain it to you right now what it is. It's basically, we're going to coach you a lot for like eight weeks. And we're also going to give you access to every training that we have, um, which includes every strategy, every technique, every um, you know template, and all that sort of stuff that we have, so that you can equip yourself to handle things that are coming up. You know, you, we're, we're going to give you access to the same team conversation. We're going to give you access to the fresh start message. We're going to give you access to how to have the commitment collaboration talk. We're going to give you access to you know what to do when you need to polarize. How to do one way spikes of doom, etc. How to deal with rebound relationships. How to deal with incredibly stubborn or resentful people, etc. And of course, if that isn't enough to help you, we uh, are going to be coaching you as well, too. So there's going to be a combination of one on one coaching calls. There's going to be several of those, as well as quite a few group coaching calls as well, too, so that you can um, learn from other people's situations, etc. Uh, this is actually, in my opinion, one of the best deals that we've ever put together. Um, and this is going to sort of kickstart a, a, <laughs> a series of big changes here at Modern Love. But more on that as we get there. Uh, in the meantime, if you do want to get on that um, interest list for our lifetime access program, head on over to modernlove.life slash lifetime. And of course, we will be giving away one membership to the lifetime access program as well, as well too. So, you know, funds are tight right now. You don't have a lot of money or something like that. You know, hey, you could still win this. All you have to do is just go to modernlove.life slash lifetime and fill out the interest list form. And then also fill in this little box below that just says, hey, what would it mean to you to be able to get support uh, from, from everything that we do, everything that we put together and all that sort of stuff? And, um, you know, probably what's going to happen is over the weekend or on Monday, we're going to go through and we're going to read all of the submissions that people have put together. And we're going to go ahead and select the person that's going to win lifetime access. And we'll go ahead and announce that probably on Monday of uh, next week. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get back on into this. So let's remove the banner. Um, and so what, what exactly do you need to do if your ex is so angry and bitter towards you about things that have happened before in the past that they just won't even give you a chance? They won't hear you out. And so what we want to do is, again, not do no contact because that, uh, again, it can sometimes work. It can also backfire horribly by giving somebody a month to sort of let their mindset about you set in place. And then they start to think, oh, well, you're just this awful person or something. And then, then they like really start to close their heart towards you. But what you want to do instead is directly address the situation at hand, which is to say, okay, if there's this perception of me that they're holding on to that's causing them to not even be open to talking about me, what we need to do is we need to tear, tear apart and pull apart this perception um, by perhaps, you know, again, depends on the circumstances, what's going on, why they're so angry and bitter towards you, why they feel this amount of hurt towards you. But it's probably going to involve something like apologizing for something that maybe you did wrong. Again, don't just apologize for the sake of apologizing, but only if you genuinely feel a sense of remorse over something that you did wrong. Like if you, um, you know, betrayed their trust in some sort of way, if you said something unkind or something like that, that you regret, yeah, you know, go ahead and apologize for it to clear out that situation and to try to straighten things out. Um, of course, we have a specific uh, strategy to help you make apologizing easier called the fresh start message. It goes way further than just the simple, you know, hey, I'm sorry for, um, you know, saying that thing about you, but it, it takes it to the next level. Um, another thing that you might want to consider doing as well, too, is to give them insight into what caused you to behave or do the thing that you did or say the thing that you said. You know, if you can let this isn't like looking for an excuse or anything, but to at least give them the opportunity to contrast their negative view of you with um, with with a with a more compassionate view. That's to say, we don't want this negative view to get cemented in place. What we want to do is we want to pivot and allow them to see you in a, in a different light so that they can let go of that negative opinion and welcome in a more positive opinion of you, okay? So for example, if, um, if you said something, I don't know, let's just say you said something in the heat of the moment, it was a little bit cruel, it hurt them, and now they're angry at you, um, rather than letting them just sit there and think that you're a jerk, that you're a insensitive, 
uh, person or something like that, what you can do is you can tell them, hey, you know, I'm sorry I said that in the moment. Um, you know, what was happening is I was actually feeling a lot of stress or I was uh, feeling really triggered by, you know, something that happened. And I kind of got into um, some sort of defensive thing where, where, where I just felt as if I needed to um, back myself up or something like that. So that's, that's sort of giving them an understanding about why you said what you said and why you did what you did. Now, of course, we're not using this as a defense, as a justification for it, but simply just letting them know why you did what you did so that you can basically connect the dots for them so that they understand why it happened and they don't have to fill in the blanks themselves and say, oh, it's because you're a jerk. And then, of course, what you also want to do is you want to share with them um, how your actions affected you, how you imagine your actions affected them as well too, and then apologize without, uh, without, without expectation or anything like that. Uh, because when you're able to do this, you're able to really land in a place where you can sort of meet them where they are at emotionally, understand where their emotional place is at, um, and then also introduce to them another way of thinking about the situation or another way of thinking about what happened that is going to let them to uh, allow them to let go of the the pain or the hurt or whatever it is that they could be holding on to. Anyway, um, if you're able to do this, um, great job, you know, cool. You're able to get past the pain. Um, you might want to you know, obviously, it's ideal to have this kind of conversation in person or on the phone or something like that if you can. If you're not able to just due to your circumstances or how tense the 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 emotions are between you and your partner, it's okay to do this via text message or email or something like that. Um, you know, it's better to do it imperfectly than to just wait for some sort of perfect situation that never materializes. So that's okay. But also, if you do do it via text or something like that, just just understand that they are not necessarily going to respond right away. You might send something out to them and yeah, maybe they do respond and say, hey, thanks for the apology, let's talk or something like that. But they also might need um, a couple days or something like that in order to just soak it in and to process it, to work through their own emotional issues or something. So, so give them that time as well too. understand that they have to go through this process of recontextualizing things and understanding things in a different sort of way. And it's not necessarily going to happen instantaneously. Sometimes it can, but it's not necessarily going to um, go this way. But once you are on the other side of all of this, what I want you to do is I want you to probably very quickly after this, uh, start by putting in place the same team conversation so that you can uh, put that structure in place underneath you to have better communication between the two of you so that there's less hurt feelings. And you have this understanding that if it ever does seem as if um, you know, you're doing something combative or aggressive or something like that, it's probably a misunderstanding and the two of you just need to talk it out rather than jumping to conclusions and assuming the worst in that situation. Anyway, up next, uh, it's really important to learn the, the topic of the same team conversation and how to save your relationship without using no contact. So next up, I'd like you to check out this video right up here in the corner um, about how to save your relationship without using the no contact rule. Um, anyway, with that being said, um, I'll talk to you over there in that video. And let's go ahead and get on into the question and answers for this video.